Hi, I'm Jerry Mines. Welcome to It's a Family Affair. I'm here with my wife, co-therapist, best friend, Deborah Mines. Hi, Terry. You know, this is a special program today. We're here to present the Jer and Deb's Book Club. Right. Yeah. Just like Oprah has her book club, well, we review books too. Okay. And there's some that we want to recommend to you. And this one's caught on like wildfire. Yeah. It's called The Seven Principles for Making Marriage Work by John Gottman, Ph.D., he talks about how to make marriage work, but also the things on this segment, we're going to talk about the things that people do all the time that really create a perfect ingredient for a disaster. There it is. So it's really kind of a cooking show, mm -hmm. and the recipe we're going to focus on um, is maybe uh, uh, part of your lifestyle, part of your marriage, and we want to alert you to the various ingredients uh, that will cook up a divorce uh, in an effort to encourage you to stop mm -hmm. in the name of love. Okay. You break your heart. <laughs> there it is. We, I was intrigued by uh, this book. We read a lot of books. You know, we have to as a result of, or to keep up with our clients and also to keep ourselves fresh. And this one, I thought, packaged the information really, really well. And mm -hmm. I found it to be true. Yeah. In our, in our relationship, we've looked at these issues. When we work with couples, we look at these issues. John Gottman looked at these issues working at the University of Washington. He's a professor of psychology there. Yeah, you know, and the interesting thing about uh, Gottlieb is that he's not a psychotherapist. He's not a Gottman. counselor. Oh, Gottman. Uh -huh. All right, sorry, I changed your name there, John. <laughs> you okay. might notice that. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's a researcher, and so he spent a lot of time studying families and oh, couples. Oh, thousands of families. Yeah. And he, dis he got to the point where he could predict with 91% accuracy who was going to get a divorce. Boy, so listen up here. You, this, this show may be about you yeah. if you're heading in the wrong direction. And, you know, we get this feeling when we see these things in our case law. We can tell for mm -hmm. a lot of the time if a couple's going to make it or not. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at the recipe for divorce and see how, if, hopefully you don't have too many of these ingredients or you don't, aren't adding too many of these to your relationship. But if you are, we really want you to take a strong look at yourself today. It's real important. So you want to start? Okay. At first, the first ingredient of for divorce is criticism and this means going oh, no, to no, no wait a minute you're just ahead of us here not not criticism yet we want to are talk you criticizing about, me yes i am here and, and we want to make sure that well, you don't I'm not create a, handle that. a harsh for that. startup okay <laughs> good Jerry. okay yeah it's the opening of of conflict right. and 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 debate yeah if it begins gently great but if it begins with a harsh startup right and well, give me an example, Deb. Yeah, why are you always telling me what to do? Why do you always, why do you never listen to anything I have to say? Right. You know, I'm really so sick of your criticism. You know, you never listen. Forget it. Okay. There I'm it going is. for the juggler. So that now I, now I can begin. So with All the right. harsh startup, typically what he sees is a critical, just the very out of the box. The yeah. couple comes into counseling, and they're going to unload with us, of course. But over the course of time of watching them, how are you doing today? Well, you know, this idiot over here has managed to screw up my week. He's late. He's wrong. She doesn't do enough for me. It's just one character assassination after the other as a habit, just yeah. feeling critical all the time. You know, it's, it's really important. Um, we teach uh, our, in our men's group, you know, the 60-second tool. And we teach men that when they get home, they have 60 seconds to find every pair of lips in the house and give everybody Including a the hug. Dog. That's right, <laughs> even Fido. And, uh, and create a first impression that's positive and caring because that sets the tone for the entire evening. Right on. So the harsh startup does the very same thing. Because it's right out of the starting gate, it is a first impression, and it will set the tone for the rest of the dialogue for the couple. Right on. And it's not going to be pretty. Criticism, um, having this ingredient of criticism, starts with an attitude of completely blaming your partner for everything that's wrong in your life and not right. taking responsibility for it. What you're doing, and it's the number one toxic ingredient, is not taking any responsibility for what you might have done to create a problem. There it is. Deb? We're going to take a look at a graphic right now okay. because this is the, the next uh, four ingredients mm -hmm. uh, for divorce. And it's the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Right. John Gottman refers to this, uh, the four and, horsemen of the apocalypse. And, and, of course, the real four horsemen are plague, famine, pestilence, and war. 
But the ones that we're focusing on here for couples mm -hmm. that lead to divorce are criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling. Or withdrawal. There it is. All right, let's, let's focus back on the first of the four horsemen, mm -hmm. criticism. Mm -hmm. Well, that's character assassination and blaming, not taking any responsibility. Um, who is responsible for my happiness is really a question you need to ask yourself if you're critical. If you're just well, constantly in a critical frame warriors of Warriors know that we're responsible for our own happiness, that mm -hmm. happiness is truly a decision, and it's a way of being. Mm -hmm. uh, people that are less than warrior-like want to make somebody else responsible for their happiness. They want to be codependent. They right. want their happiness to depend on somebody else doing it, fixing it, providing it, creating it, and doing the work for them. That's right. These people are never going to be very happy. To be a warrior is to take 100% responsibility for your happiness. There it is. And not blame another person. This is not to mean that you should n ignore problems that you're having in your relationship. We're not saying that. We're saying you stay, just have this general attitude, critical attitude that I'm unhappy and it's because of you. Even Al-Anon teaches people that if you're unhappy and you're living with a raging alcoholic, look in the mirror. Mm -hmm. You're putting up with it. You're not right. getting on with your life. This is your life. In fact, and take you're not a look taking at, responsibility for it. Right. Take a look at your side of the street. Quit focusing on your mate and their drinking and their behavior. Right. Focus on you. Right. All right. The second horse of the four horsemen uh, is contempt. Oh, contempt. Contempt is actually uh, an attitude of hatred, mm -hmm. and hatred is bad for the immune system. Yeah. One of the studies that was done in the course of his work and has been done by other um, hospitals is the effect that c contempt has on viruses. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a breeding ground for virus. Right. Couples that are, that are continuously contemptuous of one another, that sneering, hateful attitude, get more colds, mm -hmm. get Sarcasm. more influenza. Mockery. Yeah, their immune system is damaged by this kind of energy. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, they get sick. Contempt is just kind of like, hit me with your best shot. Come on, try it. I'm going to give you 20 questions. I, I basically have already decided about you. You're no good, and I'm going to prove it by nailing you just continuously. I'm contemptuous of you. My face shows contempt. It's that sneering upper lip. It's my shoulders are hunched together. I have... I have a cynical and hardened attitude towards right. you. So take a look at that behavior, even though at times you feel justified uh, in expressing that kind of toxicity. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll notice by looking at one of our other programs, uh, Heroic Talk Tools, that's your ogre witch talking. Mm -hmm. That's the ugly, angry, critical, negative Nazi within that's got the microphone. And it's not only going to do damage to you uh, and to your mate, but it'll do damage to both your ability to, to be healthy. It shuts down the flow. It there shuts it down the flow. Anytime we're in a hatred place and we say that's okay, we shut down the flow. The sh our physical flow, that means our bodies are shutting down and not getting the nutrients they need, our mental flow. There and we is. justify it. Maybe we saw it growing up and we justify it. All right, Deb, let's take a look at the third horseman of the apocalypse, mm -hmm. uh, defensiveness. Yeah. yeah, and that comes from just assuming the worst about my partner all day long, that I have to be in a defended place. I'm assuming that their motives are negative towards me. I become from an extremely egocentric place. Right. If you're living with an alcoholic, they're drinking alcoholically because they're an addict. It's not because of you. Mm -hmm. That's normal behavior for an it's addict. It's not okay, drink. but it's not because of mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So being defended all the time, being in a place of uh, or if, you're, if you have toxic parents being in a place of defensiveness towards them, mm -hmm. it's, it's not helpful. And what it does, you know, when, when somebody is one up over you, mm -hmm. uh, human nature kind of dictates that you'll be defensive and try to get even. Mm -hmm. And Debate what does mode. that do? That just motivates them to one up you and get even, and pretty soon we're escalating into really high conflict. Right. Instead of, uh, instead of really understanding that you don't need to defend yourself, you just need to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And if someone's not there to receive who you are, like your need to go to the gym or your need to take to go see your friends or your need to go back to college, you don't need to defend yourself. You just simply state what you're going to do. And if they have a problem with it, that's their problem. That's it. You don't have to be defended because the defensiveness, as you said, escalates conflict, turns it into a debate. And the whole point of de defended posture is you're not listening, you're not open. So what's the point? You're casting your pearls before swine. 
There's no point in it. That's it, Deb. And it tends to combine with contempt and criticism. He very rarely in his studies saw defensiveness without the underlying mm -hmm. harsh startup, the criticism, and the contempt, which led to defensiveness. There it is. And the fourth horseman of the apocalypse is stonewalling or right. withdrawing. This is a, a classically co codependent but also passive aggressive style of fighting. It's dirty fighting. It's, it's swamp talk. It's swamp thing kind of, of behavior. Yeah. And, and the other three come first. It's, you know, the, the criticism, the contempt, the defensiveness. You're kicking it up a notch. Bam, bam, bam. And finally, you know, you don't even want any more. It's, I'm not even going to go there with you. I'm going to start. I'm feeling tuning out because I'm feeling flooded and overwhelmed with negativity and I'm going to punish you back because I can't take it anymore. And my punishment will come from my coldness. My coldness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Stonewalling is really a physical, uh, there's a physical precedent and that is just feeling overwhelmed. There it is. Deb, let's talk about some differences uh, between men and women. Some biological facts, please. Okay. Well, women uh, tend to cool down quicker after an argument and mm -hmm. that that's been measured by heart rate women's heart rates tend to uh, be very high during an argument but they right. tend to cool down a lot quicker than men men's heart rate stays elevated 20 minutes after an argument and is only only comes down if they can retaliate after 20 minutes. <laughs> what? We men retaliate? Do we try to get even? Okay. Right. Well, and, of course. Yes. So the, the upshot here is that this kind of vigilance that men do takes a, a, a high toll on them physiologically. And the, the result is that men are stonewallers 85% of the time. Right. And there's, there's really some physiological um, and historical reasons for that in the develop of, of our development of ourselves as mammals, why mm -hmm. we are why we are different, the gender. Yeah, let's get back to the basics there. Why is that, Deb? Well, women in nature were meant to nurture children mm -hmm. initially, back in the cave women days, mm -hmm. and to calm down quicker so they didn't eat their young. Right. Okay. Good, good to be, thing. To okay. say stop. Mothers out there. It, okay. <laughs> don't do that. Don't right. don't throw that stick at your brother. You know, whatever. And and then to calm down and get rid of it and forget all about it. Right. Men had a warrior stance mm -hmm. where they had to be up all night looking to see if there was enemies coming into the territory. So men tend to remain right. aroused in their anger, and tend to release it when they throw the spear. Mm -hmm. If a woman throws a spear, she's going to take out the kids. <laughs> if a man throws a spear, he's going to take out the enemy. That's it. Or the so, wildebeest. Or the wildebeest. That he needs to drag right, home Right. That's a hunting, a hunter's mentality. So there it is. A lot of our basic behavior uh, is instinctual. It's about survival. It's about dealing with life and challenges on this planet. And a lot of our patterns in this modern day world are still uh, controlled by those ancient imprints when we were trying to carve out life on this this fragile planet. Right. Well, Deb, you know, we've got uh, a number of, of other components that we want to throw into the recipe other mix here today. Uh -huh. and, uh, and we're going to come back and add to your list uh, predictors of divorce and go through the rest of the ingredients uh, for the recipe for divorce. Hi, I'm Jerry Mines. Welcome back to It's a Family Affair. I'm here with my co-host, Deborah Mines. Uh -huh. Hey, Deb. You know, this is a, we're having a kind of an interesting and very different show. We're, we're, we're focusing on the recipe for divorce. Yes. And we had an opportunity during the first segment to uh, emphasize uh, the very first um, components of that recipe, the mm -hmm. very first ingredients, which included a harsh startup, you know, starting out aggressive. And starting off of, angry with a mat on. That's it. And we also focused on the four horsemen of the apocalypse, criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling. And we also began to take a look at some of the differences between men and women. That's right. And I guess, Deb, you know, Looking back at those differences between males and females, what, what is going on inside the heads of men and women? Right. Well, as we talked about in the last segment, after an argument, women get rid of it. 
Mm -hmm. And then they start to calm down. Right. After they've been critical or whatever, they, t they start to calm down. Men tend to stay revved up. Their heart right. rate, and we talked about the warrior who is looking out you know, for the enemy and doesn't feel good until he's thrown the spear. Mm -hmm. So men tend to stay aroused. And inside of men's heads, <laughs> okay. there's a greater tendency to think negative thoughts that maintain the distress after an assault. Okay. And it will be like, uh, I don't have to take this. I'm going to get even. Why is she always blaming me? It goes yeah around and around and around where the woman is more likely to say you know I got that out of the way now we can climb to the next level mm -hmm. but the man's going to maintain that for a longer period of time which creates disharmony it's just biological it's difficult right. for men so women out there be aware that when you've aroused the man in anger you, you've aroused a Neanderthal. You've aroused okay. a mad on and a okay. Neanderthal. And you're going to have a mad attitude. He's going to have a mad attitude for about yeah. 20 minutes. It's going to be hard for him to do what you do, which and, inside of a woman's head is, I said what I needed to say. And, and before you go there with that, I, I just want to reemphasize the need that this is the time when a timeout is really appropriate. Right. You know, this is feeling toxic. We're out of control. I want to work this out. I want to be your friend. Let's talk about this uh, tonight at supper or tomorrow morning. Or in 20 minutes. We pick a time. Because, I mean, really, they're looking at the 20-minute mm -hmm. uh, rule, that it takes 20 minutes for that heart Gals rate. Gals out there, I, I suggest you give him longer than 20 minutes. That, <laughs> that's guy, pushing yeah. the river there, you know. <laughs> he's, uh, he's still scratching. He'll want to throw the spear after 20 minutes. Yeah, that's so. right. Okay. Don't let him throw the spear. Yeah, wait wait the, he changes, you know. Research. Back to, back to human. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, that hair just kind of goes back in the pores and the nails recede. That's and, right. Yeah. He, because we do become monsters, gentlemen, okay? We become Dracula or the Wolfman. Werewolf, or yeah. Somebody like that, somebody really scary. And, mm -hmm. and we need time to turn back into a nice human, mm -hmm. okay? That's right. So what's going on inside those women's well, heads there, Deb? Basically, Deb? the research suggests that women are constitutionally better at handling stress. They can mm -hmm. work, they can take care of kids, they can also want to climb to higher levels in the relationship and do it all. Women have just this tendency to... to be able to spin plates a little you know, better. That's amazing about you gals. You know, I just see it over and over again. You know, I'm hearing women say, well, you know, we've just got to move this relationship to a higher level of, of awareness and consciousness. And, and she looks over at him and he hasn't got a clue. Right. Hasn't got a clue. Men flood a lot easier. They just flood with too many words. Women speak a lot more than men. Right. And flooding means flooding with negative or overwhelming emotions. And sometimes men just flood because they flood. Okay. <laughs> you know, if a woman comes in and says, I, I've had a really wonderful day, he may flood. If he's, hearing, if he's already feeling flooded inside, men just tend to flood easier than women with, with too much and, going on. And the on. other thing men don't understand about women, and this is a point you've made here, is that, uh, you know, women want to push uh, the conflict, want to push through the pain, want to push through, you know, with anger in an effort to get to the next level. Right, they're using dynamite to get through. Right, and, and we men, of course, are going like, couldn't we just put that, uh, th that flame out? Couldn't we put the... the um, uh, Can't we watch television and just have a decent evening? Yeah. You constantly have to push me to grow higher and talk more and open up more of my inner thoughts. Don't I'm not really interested light in that. that fuse, Dad. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah. There's dynamite here. Okay. There's another way to approach me. A lot of women feel <laughs> helpless. They don't know how to get through, so they, they resort to anger, or they've seen it growing up. They saw their mother just be contemptuous because she's married to a, a caveman, and they just start up with it. They don't and even try a nice approach. You're right, and I hear it again and again, is that, you know, well, I've tried everything else to get his attention. The only way I can get his attention is with anger. Ladies, trust me, okay? You can get his attention with a little different approach here, and that approach is first, name three things you appreciate about him. Mm -hmm. That's going to be our next show. Yep. We're going to talk about And you about get his attention. <laughs> okay. And and like, of course, we all Yeah, what's him. next, honey? And, and then you can, you know, present something that's bothering you, something that needs to be addressed. Women, the difference also with women is they can't ignore pain as well mm -hmm. um, as in general. This is not true for every man and every woman. Please don't think that. Research suggests, what, uh, looking at a whole galumpity glump amount of people and... and therapy, women tend to, when they're feeling emotional pain, have to work on it. That's mm -hmm. why these workshops are filled with women. That's why the books <laughs> on self-help are filled with women. That's why churches are filled with women. Women are saying, yeah. I need to address my pain and I want to get to the next level. I want to open up. It's just, I, it's, a, it's part of being a woman that's, that's not going to go away. 
So if a man's going to marry a woman, he better get used to it. She's going to notice the pain. What we want to teach women is to notice your own pain, take care of yourself. Don't expect him to fix it. Mm -hmm. Then you can come from a place that's not contemptuous and critical and defensive. You can come from a place of saying, you know, I just need to go in Al to an Al-Anon meeting for me, and I'll see you later. There it is. You know, I hope you enjoy your TV yeah. dinner. <laughs> Or your woman's group, or your church group, or whatever it you is that take nourishes care of me. you and takes care of you as yeah. a family. Absolutely. You know, and if you want a gourmet dinner, you can cook. Mm -hmm. Just take care of yourself. You don't have to deliver that line with so much contempt. All right, Deb, let's yeah. go back and we're going to recap the first uh, few ingredients uh, for divorce. These okay. are all predictors. We had the heart startup. We had the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which is criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling. Then you talked about flooding. Okay, mm -hmm. if we continue to flood our mate mm -hmm. with negative emotions, that's not a good thing. Let's go to item four, and that's body language. Right. Um, well, again, we're talking about what's happening. We need to be aware of what's happening inside of our own bodies and our partners, partners' bodies. That's mm -hmm. why we're bringing this out. Men's heart rates are going to go up. Women will notice that their their hackles go up. That's a very feminine trait. They start mm -hmm. to feel like they're defending themselves and they'll feel a lot of tension in their neck and shoulders they'll feel mm -hmm. tightness in their jaw and tightness and men will feel that too men tend to feel just some heart pounding their mm -hmm. blood pressure goes up they mm -hmm. feel like they're you know they're surging adrenaline and they need to attack so be aware of that in other shows we've talked about ways to ask your partner what's your temperature Right. What emotional color are you? That's mm -hmm. uh, What's your flag? Yeah, which what color flag are you? A red flag? Are you in anger? If you know that about your partner, it's going to be a tip-off. The other thing, so you're not immediately making the worst assumption. Another predictor of, a, of divorce, and we see this clinically, is that one partner may attempt a repair. Mm -hmm. That means introducing a little humor, a little levity. Uh, right. May um, say, let's take a break, or, you know, we really do love each other, but we're just having a rough time. We just had a new baby. And the other partner will just slam it down. Right. And they'll just criticize and dismiss their partner's attempt to bring a little bit of spackle and repair this thing. So this ingredient is a pattern of failed repair attempts. It's a big predictor okay. when you see one partner trying to repair it lovingly by you know mm -hmm. introducing a little joke and the, if you see the, the couple laugh at somebody's attempt to maybe or even you know admission of guilt mm -hmm. that's another way to, to repair. And when your mate extends that attempt don't discount it. Right. Don't, don't continue to to play one-upsmanship. Yes. Alright number six has to do this is the sixth predictor of divorce with bad memories. Right, bad memories means that a, we always ask couples to describe how they met. Mm -hmm. And I can pretty much predict a couple who's not going to make it when they say, oh, well, you know, I was forced to go out in this, this crappy bar and I met this jerk. <laughs> you know, that's your romance story. Our, our wedding was a d disaster. I hated his mother from the start. Right. And he was drunk and uh, pushed me. You know, you're, that's. Right. Th th Let's just put it this way. If they have a happy recollection of the past, then you have a better predictor. But if they rewrite the past, they rewrite it negatively. Mm -hmm. That means if they really had a negative past, we give them very low predictor of success. Right. But if they take a pleasant past and they rewrite it negatively, just pick out all the things that are dark and negative. It's a bad indicator. It's a bad so, indicator. And that can happen with courtship memories. If they're weak. weak or negative. Right. And also <clears throat> negative projection. You know, you're just like my mom. You're right. Just like my dad. Right. All right, let's take a look, Deb, at the seventh predictor of divorce. Yes. And that is yeah. if they see marital problems as severe and unsolvable. Right. If the couple, I, I ask them, uh, you know, how do you feel about this marriage? Do you think it's going to work? And they say, no. What do they want me to do as the therapist? Bring hope to the party? And so you hear them say things like, well, you know, talking things over seems useless. You know, right. And, and uh, so what happens then is they end up trying to solve these problems on their own, and they start leading parallel lives. And, of mm -hmm. course, when that happens, you know, the Thinking game is sliding downhill fast. Loneliness sets in. And this can lead to an affair. That's right. And, and, and what know, is an affair, Terry? Well, it's, it's a symptom of a dying marriage, but it's not the cause of the problem. It's a symptom that, that you know, we had a, a lot of bad ingredients in this mm -hmm. recipe uh, called mm -hmm. marriage, and we've been doing the dance wrong. 
And I want to let you know in the last moment that we have, if you have been able to identify with any of these ingredients in your marriage, it's time to get some help. Before it's too late, don't come to us for us to co-sign your divorce. Come in now. If you're critical, contemptuous, call a therapist and get moving. There it is. Deb, thank you. I'm Jerry Mines, and it's been a family affair.